Hello, everyone. I am Mr. Keegan. Unfortunately, I do not have a webcam, so you will not be able to see my face, but you can, of course, see me at school. I am the only teacher with both long hair tied into a bun and also a beard. Anyway, let's get started with the video. As you've seen, this video is about both senses and sensory receptors. The objectives of this video is to learn about some different sensory receptors and how we use them to gather information, and also to review the five senses we use to experience the world. All information that we take in about the world is gathered through our five senses. As I'm sure you know, those senses include sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. We detect stimuli in the world through special structures called receptors. We have several types of sensory receptors in our body. We are going to mention a few in this video. One of them is mechanoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors are, are for sensing physical force. It could be pressure, like the pressure of something touching our skin or our blood pressure, and also stretching in our skin. We also have thermoreceptors, which as I'm sure you have already guessed, sense temperature changes. We also have nociceptors, which are in charge of us feeling pain, which while not pleasant, can definitely be important for us and our livelihood. These first three on the list are examples of touch receptors. We'll talk about those a little bit more later in the video. We also have photoreceptors that sense light, and chemoreceptors that sense chemicals and other chemical compounds. Sensory receptors take in information from the world, and they tr transmit signals from neuron to neuron all the way back to the brain. Each sensor might respond to different inputs, whether they're electromagnetic, mechanical, or chemical in nature, in order to get us information about the world so that we might survive and thrive in it. As you know, and I'm sure you have known since kindergarten, we do have five senses that help us to experience the world. Those include vision, smell, taste, hearing, and touch. The first one we're going to look at is vision. It's very, very important that we have light. Without light, we are not able to see anything. What happens is that light will bounce off of an object and into our eye. The light will travel through the cornea that might expand or get smaller in order to focus the light. The light then lands on our retina and the back of our eye on the photoreceptors that, as I mentioned, sense light. The retina then sends electric signals traveling from neuron to neuron all the way to the brain, at which time we then see the object. Next thing we're going to talk about is our sense of smell. Odors are caused by molecules that are detected by the chemoreceptors in our nose. Without the molecules, we would not be able to smell, and uh, then we wouldn't be able to have all of the wonderful, wonderful scents that we experience in the world. Uh, on your screen, you'll see some examples of some chemical compounds and the smells that they represent. I don't expect you to memorize these, I just think that it's a little interesting to see what it looks like. So as you can see, all of these, what are called esters, have this oxygen, carbon, oxygen, with things bonded to either side. And so this one is what's responsible for us smelling raspberry. There's peach, and grape, and vanilla, which is not pictured here. But these all come into the chemoreceptors inside of our nose and allow us to smell. Chemoreceptors are also important for our sense of taste. Both taste and smell uh, rely on chemoreceptors in order for us to sense these things, and they actually work together in order to help us to taste food. In fact, they are so closely related that if we did not have a sense of smell, then it would be nearly impossible to tell the difference between the taste of an onion and the taste of an apple. 
The next sense that we're going to talk about is our sense of hearing. What happens is that sound, whenever energy is released in the form of sound, those sound waves travel through the air into our eardrum, which then vibrates and sends vibrations into the inner ear, where there is both fluid and little tiny hairs that sense movement in that fluid. Then those signals are sent from neuron to neuron out into the brain so that we can then hear what is out there. Uh, the same fluid with the little hairs that I was just talking about also are very important for a sense of balance. That's why if you were to spin around very quickly in a circle, then that fluid inside every ear touches all of the hairs at about the same time and causes mass confusion, uh, causing you to become dizzy. And last, we have the sense of touch. Touch receptors help us to detect pain, pressure, and temperature, like I stated earlier. There are also some parts of our body that have more touch receptors than others, because they might be more important for us to feel. For instance, I don't know if you have ever stubbed your toe on something accidentally, but it definitely hurts a whole, whole bunch. That's because our body wants to make sure that our feet are sensing everything they possibly can. It was very important for early humans and still important for us today. And so we have a lot of nerve endings in our feet and in our toes. So whenever you hit it, it hurts more there than other places because of how many nerve endings there are there. So in this video, we talked about some different sensory receptors and how we use them to gather information. And we also reviewed the five senses that we use to experience the world. If you don't remember any of these, feel free to go back in the video and rewatch them or to do some research on your own. But for now, we have some review questions. Please read these questions and answer them underneath the video. And both Mrs. Smart and I will be checking them to see who has finished this video. So the first question is, which two senses are most closely related to each other? Why might that be? Number two is name the three touch receptors discussed in this video. What does each receptor sense? And finally, why might we have more touch sensors in some parts of our body than others? So again, go ahead and answer those questions. And thank you all for listening, and I will see you all in school very soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.